Drug and alcohol addiction exists in our community. I had a daughter who was born cocaine positive. The unfortunate circumstances that they end up having some children. My children were actually taken from me. Babies that have been exposed to drugs and alcohol prenatally tend to have significant developmental delays. They were taken for a little over two years, like about two years and three months. The children aren't a fault. The children haven't done anything wrong. Children that have been exposed to this after they get out of the initial withdrawal phase tend to go on and have a slower development. I have him since he was three days old. They also will have behavioral problems. They found out that he was uh, cocaine positive. They tend to not learn as well. They don't trust anyone to take care of them. I had a relapse three months after my children were taken from me. They start out with sort of a, almost a learned hopelessness. They may be aggressive to other children. Sometimes they don't cry at all because they don't really expect anybody to respond. Children that are abused or neglected may also show signs of poor weight gain and growth. Without the right kind of intervention, these problems just get worse. Children zero to three, particularly those children who've been abused or neglected, are the most vulnerable for long-term serious consequences. First of all, during that time, their brain is rapidly developing. It's the time when the early experiences will shape who these people are as adults later on in life. So it's a really critical window of opportunity to influence and shape development. What is really unique about Safe Start is that it is both a, a treatment type program, but it's a prevention strategy as well. It is a two generational program. The parent and child and the family unit can actually revolve around this educational process. Not only are we providing services to the infants and toddlers, the parents involved with their children in Safe Start can see the developmental process. But we are teaching parents how to parent. The parent is actually able to help facilitate and continue the learning at home with the child. So we are providing intense intervention for the whole family. The Safe Start program is a very unique program. In child protection, we have to first make sure that a child is safe. There are only a couple of them across the country in which you have a partnership between a county of children and youth department and an early head start program. The second thing is that we want to make sure that we find a permanent home for, for that child. We're helping the children and youth department reduce their costs and we're helping them close cases. And then the third item is that we want to make sure that the child is being well cared for. Because the children when they leave our care are go are no longer part of the children and youth system. And that's where a program such as Safe Start uh, comes in because it meets all those markers. We're in temporary space here. We're on upper floors, which is not appropriate for infants and children due to fire issues. We are bursting at the seams where we currently are. We have had to actually push some of our preschool Head Start classes out of facilities that we own here on our campus in order to make room to get our Safe Start program up and running quickly. The center needs to be on one floor for ease in going in and out of the building. So we need a facility that's all going to be on the ground floor and that's going to be appropriate for the development and the age of these children. We looked in the downtowns, we looked in a lot of different locations and none of the spaces that we were able to find were appropriate for the classes that we need but they were also very expensive and in the long run it's going to be less expensive for us to own our own space which is exactly what we need than it is to rent a renovated space that's really not exactly what we need. The new center will allow children the opportunity to have experiences with nature, with things in the classroom that they're not able to have even in our current classrooms. We want an entire therapeutic environment for both the children and their parents so that they can feel safe and loved and comforted when they walk in the door and know this is a place where they're going to get help. It will allow us to have comprehensive services for children and families in one location. We are we're looking forward to having classrooms that support high quality best practice. We can really make a huge difference in these children's lives. I've seen a child who started one week before he turned two years old, so we only had him for a year because they, after three years old they graduate. In that year, I saw him start with no speech, no verbalizations really at all. Um, he definitely couldn't process um, directions or he didn't really know how to interact with the other children. 
in California, they start measuring the number of prison cells they'll need by the children at risk in third and fourth grade. So it starts at a very early age. And when he left at three years old, he was speaking full sentences. He was following two-step commands. He was being nurturing to the other peers. He was being sympathetic, empathetic. And research has shown us that the old adage of a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure really does come into play. And his relationship grew with his family also. We're stopping the cycle of abuse and neglect. We're stopping the cycle of drug abuse and the impact that it has on little children. Honestly, I really don't know where my kids would be today. About 89% of the children do achieve a permanent home and a caregiver that loves them and is able to take responsibility for them. That's their main goal here is to reunite their children, you know, the children with their, their parents. And that's really pretty astounding because children birthed to three who've been abused or neglected usually languish in the foster care system. Children that are placed in foster care systems repeatedly continually have an interruption in their ability to develop strong, secure attachments with caregivers. They are far more apt to be in foster care and remain in foster care um, until their adolescence. They've really brought my family together, it made us a lot closer. This is really a remarkable result that families have been able to be reunified and able to take care of their children in this permanent home. Children and youth has actually determined that it's far less costly for them to, to pay up to half the cost of the operation of the state Safe Start program than it is to put a child in foster care. I like the teachers. If the children were not in our Safe Start program, we would not be interrupting the cycle of abuse. He just rolls all over the floor, you know, stay put, and he's more alert. Make sure you stick to your goals, clean your act up, and get your kids back. The county taxpayers are actually benefiting from these children being in our care for maybe up to three years in the Safe Start program, and then perhaps on to the Head Start program. He's more attentive. That's what they're here for. He came a long ways. The Safe Start program allows these children to have a fighting chance in our community, and we are really looking forward to being able to do that. It's a wonderful program. Mm -hmm.